Hi everyone, and welcome to Anna Dialogue, the dialogue on analog music reproduction. In this episode, we're going to explore something different, truly different, I must say. In fact, we're going to focus on 35 millimeter tape. What's that? And why is this so important in the recording industry, in the what is among the most famous and the most important classical music series? What am I talking about? Let's take a look. Okay, so in this video, we're going to explore the use of a special kind of tape in creating records, vinyl records. I'm talking about 35 millimeter cinematic film, yes, because um, uh, the normal tape that was used for movies, which was very high quality, and so-called 35 millimeter, at a certain point uh, was adopted by a series of, of labels, and we will see that more in depth in a while, to create exceptional recordings, because as you can imagine, that type of tape was much better than the normal tape. So, um, what, 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 what happened? Well, actually, uh, RCA and another um, brand called Westrix in the 50s started to modify first, first RCA, and then both started to create their own um, reel-to-reel three-track recordings based on 35 millimeter tape. And this was uh, an incredible breakthrough because, as you can imagine, this tape compared to the quarter of an inch or even half inch tape was much wider, what was better. What, what, what were the, the, the characteristics of 35 millimeter tape? Why is this tape so much better? Well, mainly for four uh, main aspects. First of all, the, um, the film itself was very, very thick in respect to the normal. Uh, tape of that time, which means less print through. What's print through? I don't know if you ever heard a, a, a if you have a good system when you put a record. Sometimes you can hear on your vinyl records, not tape. You can hear the music almost like like it's playing a uh, hundred kilometers away or in the other room, very very slow. And then all of a sudden, that same part of the music starts the, its normal program on your system. What's that? It's tape. It's the the leaking of the sound, uh, this this um, this effect, which um, determines the passage, the, the the magnetization, unfortunately, from one level to the uh, to the one below of the tape. So this this print through effect, unfortunately, is present in in a lot of recordings, uh, which obviously you do not hear at a certain point because the volume is so loud. But in the beginning, since it's silent, you do hear that, and with 35 millimeter tape. That problem is greatly reduced. Plus, the oxide on the on the film was even even um, that was also even more thicker than the normal oxide on normal tape, quarter of an inch tape used for audio. And and that also great great created a great benefit. Why? Because if you have a higher oxide, there. Mm, the maximum level can can be extended to a much higher level before saturation. So in that case, you could pump up a little more of the volume and have a better presence, a, 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 simply a, a higher signal recorded instead of keeping it low in order to do not have distortion. So these are already two incredible points. Plus, a third point, as you can imagine, the width of the tape. It's huge. Um, in fact, they were recording three large um, tracks, which uh, which were, were able at that point to deliver a, um, a higher frequency response and also a wider dynamic range. Um, obviously, if you have a, a wider, higher dynamic range and a higher frequency response, the overall uh, depth, the sound stage, the quality of the music is going to be much better than the normal uh, quarter of an inch tape, for example. In fact, they, um, they say that sometimes you could also boost 
the 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 the, the dynamic range uh, uh, over 13 dB, 13 decibels, which is a lot. Our last point is um, considerations regarding wow and flutter. Since, as you can imagine, 35 millimeter tape had a, a, those holes al along the side, it's called sprucket film, um, it, it, it was able to give a constant um, flow when, when it was playing. Um, normal tape, uh, according to Westrix and RCA in those, in the, in those periods, in that time, uh, noticed that there was wow and flutter issues in the start and in, in the end of a, of a normal reel-to-reel -reel tape. With this uh, type of tape instead, and also the mechanisms associated with it, um, that, was, that issue was greatly reduced. So four important features that greatly enhanced music reproduction, I mean, recording, the quality of the recordings. And in fact, um, I'm almost astonished that uh, this type of tape was used actually not that much in the end. I mean, only for a few recordings. It, it probably was very, very expensive. In fact, there is one label that, that really used it 100% and that achieved uh, the, the, the zenith among the, the top best recordings or series of recordings in history. But we'll get to that. So let's start to uh, see what was the story, the history of this, um, of this tape. So um, the first uh, big label starting to use 35 millimeter tape was Everest in the 50s, at the end of the 50, 50s actually, with these um, uh, RCA and Westrix type of recorders. Um, uh, using three tracks. There, there are a few excellent recordings from them, but unfortunately that lasts only, I think, a couple of years. Then Everest un uh, unfortunately closed, shut down, and was bought, was, um, in, you could say, um, embraced and uh, enhanced by Fine Recording. Fine created by Robert Fine. Well, a fine recording, Robert Fine, together with Mercury Records, especially the person of Wilma Cozart, which at a certain point also married, they also gave birth to, as I said, one of the most important and most famous uh, classical recording series in history. What am I talking about? The Mercury Living Presence. Mercury Living Presence was already active, actually, um, uh, in, in the past years, in, during the 50s, and they were already recording on three tracks. But when um, uh, Robert Fine went in, the, the, the team, and plus other, uh, other guys, obviously, they created this new ensemble, this new group dedicated to um, enhance the quality, and in fact, started to adopt um, the 35 millimeter tape. Um, I, we must also um, cite uh, the importance of the microphones they used, because in in the beginning they were using these uh, we could say good quality uh, microphones, especially the Telefunk and Newman um, U47, and then uh, afterwards also the KM56. But it was the, when they First introduced in the center channel, used the other ones I mentioned on the on the on the sides, but then on all channels, the Schoeps Telefunken handmade M201. Um, according to the legend, they were made only 36 in the whole world, and in fact, the production house Mercury Records uh, asked before going hit their, hitting the road to have at least six microphones three for recording and three for backup, because you never know what's going to happen. And um, uh, Robert Fine st started to look for these, and finally, after a, a lot of, a long time, he finally managed to put his hands on a few examples and record with that. In the first, as I said, in the beginning, it was only in the center channel, and then they used it on all three channels, because it had a special kind of quality. They could use it in, 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 in different ways. I'm not going to go inside the details, but let's just say that there were special microphones for the, for the era. And uh, in fact, this was at the heart, 
together with the 35 millimeter tape of the quality of Mercury Living Presence records. Um, we I just want to give you a, a few more details on the setup. So um, you, they usually hung only three, only three microphones on top of the director's conductor's head, more or less, or even even higher. It depended, and um, uh, the signal went in. A, a, a van they had outside of the place they were recording. And in that van, they had a lot of <laughs> recording material and reel-to-reel -reel tapes. In fact, the left and the right um, uh, um, channels went to the left and right channels of two recording machines. And the center, the center microphone, went to the center track of these two machines, plus also a full mono track because um, the Mercury Living Presence was created in stereo but they also had mono versions because a lot of people still had mono. So they had to do both things. Plus the fantastic aspect of this is that especially uh, Wilma um, Cossert um, directly mixed these afterwards when they were in the studios. They, they used this, the, the session tapes they mixed the, these in, in the mixer without creating a, a, a two-track tape. They mixed the, the, the sound and directly uh, sent it through to the cutting heads uh, for the mono and also for the stereo, uh, obviously through a, a, an amplifier. And that is why Mercury Living Presence Records is amazing, has amazing quality, not only for this particular type of tape, not only for this fantastic type of microphones, but also for the the, the, the mixing job of, a, uh, of Robert in recording and Wilma for the mixing. Wilma uh, Cossert unfortunately died just a few years ago in 2009, but before that, in the, uh, during the 90s, she remastered all the Merc or most of the of the recordings of the Mercury Living Presence on CD using the same technique plus also highly collectible uh, limited number series of vinyl records. And if you find those, obviously those amazing, are amazing. Uh, the originals are, are, are probably better. I have a few, rec few reel-to-reel -reel tapes, but those are down mixes. I don't have originals, unfortunately. What I do have, though, I wanted to show you, is also another piece of history regarding the Mercury Living Presence, which is this. In fact, you can notice here, before going getting in depth, you can notice the sprunket type of tape here. All the, all the records that have, or at least most of them, that, ha that used a 35 millimeter tape for recording have this type of, we could say, gr graphics in order to understand immediately that they used this type of tape, the 35 millimeter tape. And um, amazingly, I mean, this it was a, a, a sort of a convergence of, of, of special facts. In 1961, they went for the first time and the last time until the, the fell of the Berlin Wall. They went to Russia, the the, the mythical, um, as you can see here, the the mythical um, van of Mercury Records, and as you can see, the recording directly at the Bolshoi. Incredible. And they did a lot of recordings while they were in Russia during the Soviet era. And in fact, I bought this special edition at least 15 years ago, I don't remember, where all together were, are collected, these are reissues, the, uh, the fantastic um, Mercury Living Presence records on 35 millimeter tape recorded in Russia. And as you can imagine, these are fantastic. If you can find the originals, that's even better. But again, I mean, these are something aside from the other types of records. And that is why I'm, I'm very sorry that we have so little recordings, uh, a low number of recordings of this type. Um, obviously, we don't have only the, these Russian recordings. We have a, a, a lot of different other types of uh, always, especially classical music. Although Mercury did have a Mer Mercury pop um, line series where you can find other uh, other types of music a little more pop, 
Don't think singers like Lady Gaga, obviously, but something a little more easygoing. Like some, something like the Boston Pops, for example, or Arthur Fiddler, or something like that. Um, obviously, there were other, other um, uh, labels. For example, I know that Philips did this. This is a reissue of, of Richter. Again, you can see the, the Sprunket type of film in the graphics. But also, um, uh, Cameo Parkway did, uh, as a label, did a few recordings, as well as Reprise. There was another uh, in interesting production, more on the pop side, uh, developed by Anaclite. Uh, I've, I've discussed about Anaclite, uh, for example, in a video I did on a few 70s recordings. Here's a link. Which he he did a, and he was a, a conductor, but also a musical engineer. So he was, he had great knowledge on this. He had he made great records, I think, mainly based on movie themes and re-elaboration of this. He also experimented on the, the stereo, three phase, four phase, a lot of stuff. Very very cool. And in fact, obviously he had this opportunity, and he caught it right away. As you can see, this is actually a real first edition, 1961, of the, the this. Um, of this album on Command Records. This is another label that was issuing uh, records using the 35 millimeter. Here you don't have that graphics of the Sprunket um, type of film, but I think it's rather clear. <laughs> Stereo 35 millimeter, that's the, the, the title, and also the medium used. Um, and uh, this was very famous actually in that era. Um, it went up all the way up in the, in, the, in, the, in the charts. It had a lot of, a lot of success. I mean, it's not incredible. It's it's a decent record, but I would highly recommend to go at the Mercury Living Presence. Absolutely, that's part of our history. And if you have, if you don't want to spend too much money, they did this reissues on CD. You can find them on Amazon, which are fantastic. Well, okay, guys. I hope you enjoyed this short video on the history of Mercury Living and Presence. And subscribe. Leave your comments. Leave also your suggestions on 35mm tape recordings you think are, are, are worth listening to. And hope to see you soon. Bye, guys.